Hey, Sun Dreamers, Mr. Hansen back with the next video for you in data analysis. We are now going to talk about line plots. So our such question is, how can a line plot be used to describe a set of data? Well, what is a line plot? A line plot, also called a dot plot, shows the frequency something occurs by displaying data on a number line. All right, so here's what a line plot looks like. All right, so four things about a line plot that you need to make sure that you understand and know because you might have to create one on your own. It needs to have a title, include a title in it, okay? So it needs to know what exactly the line plot is even about. Do you have a number line or your scale, all right? Then you have dots or X's that shows the frequency of that number for that set of data. So for example, there are 227s, 228s, okay? And then finally, you label the axis down at the bottom of the number, under the number line so that way you know what the number line is actually representing. So in set one, it's time in minutes. Set two is also time in minutes, all right? So that's what a line plot looks like. So now we're gonna answer questions that involve line plots. So here we go. All right. <clears throat> the following dot plots show the amount of time it takes each randomly sampled student to complete a, uh, two different sets of math homework problems. So it could be cohort A, cohort B. You never know. The question is, what is the mean time for each set of problems? So I need to find the mean or the average. So that means I'm adding them up. Remember, use your calculator. It helps you out. makes you go faster. So for set one, I have all of these dots. So that means I need to include all of them. So I'm going to write down 27 twice, 28 twice, 29 three times, 30 twice, and then 33. So for set one, I have two 27s, two 28s, I have three 29s, two 30s, and a 33. So those are all the data set or the values, excuse me, in that data set. Then I'm gonna divide that by how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There would be ten, so I'm gonna divide all those by ten. I'm gonna add them up on my calculator real quick to get my answer. So I have 27 twice, 28 twice, 29, three times, 30 twice, and 33. Gives me a grand total of 290. Divide that now by 10. I get 29. So for set one, 29, and that's in minutes. Remember, no numbers by themselves, no bare numbers. We need to make sure that we have a label with our answer. So that's for set one. I'm gonna do now set two, down below it. Again, super important to make sure you show your work so we don't make mistakes, which is why I wrote all those values out. All right, so for set Two, I have four 24s, four 25s, and two 27s. So I'm gonna add all those up. So 24, four times. 25, that's four, four times. And finally, two 27s. Again, that's 10 total values, so I'm dividing that by 10. Excuse my sloppiness, I'm not doing this for neatness, I'm doing it for accuracy. So I'm going to add all these up. I have 24 four times. I have 25 four times. And I have two 27s. So I add those all up. Give me a grand total of 250. Divide that by 10. Giving me my set to mean 25 minutes. All right? So that's how you find the mean from line plots. I know it seems tedious, but write it all out because it's the easiest way to make sure you cover every single dot or x on the line plot. Don't forget to do that. Now, we can make a comparative statement based on the mean values, okay? So, we know that set 1 of the homework problems is more challenging than set 2. Well, how do we know that? Because for set one, on average, it took almost 30 minutes to do those problems, whereas set two, 
20 to 5 minutes. It's almost a 5 minute difference between the set of problems. So we know that set 1 is probably more challenging. Alright, <clears throat> next example. Now, this one says that Sonia randomly surveyed 26 7th graders. Here are the 26 dots or X's for my line plot. Title explains what we're talking about. We're talking about weekly internet use. My number line, my axis being labeled, represents the number of hours for internet use for students. Each dot is one of the students. All right? So <clears throat> she records the data in the dot plot shown, and she infers that on average, most seventh graders use the internet a little more than seven hours each week. Now, why would she come up with that? Well, if you look at the trend, how many students were between three to five? That's only a few. How many students are seven or more? Well, almost all of them, right? The majority of those 26 students that she obviously surveyed. So, question A says the mean of Son Sonia's data is blank hours. Well, now we gotta figure that out. Again, show your work, write it down. So I have two threes, I have a four, and I have two fives here. Now look how many sevens I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sevens, right? Two, four, six, eight of them. Now I'm going to make this a little bit quicker by doing seven times eight, so I don't write seven, eight times, and you just sit there watching the video of me going over and over and over and over again, and you make sure you write those down. I have three eights, eight times three is 24. I have five nines, that's 45, when you multiply them together. And I have five tens, which of course is 50. So I'm gonna add all these up and divide by my total number of students, which is 26. So here we go, I have three and three, which is six plus four is 10. Plus two fives is 20, plus 56, because that's seven times eight, plus 24, plus 45, and 50. I get a total of 195, and I'm dividing that by now 26. Gives me an average of seven and a half hours, all right? So, was Sonia's inference on average Correct, yeah, because it says a little more than seven hours. Well, seven and a half is just a little more than seven, all right? Question B says the median of Sonia's data is blank hours. Now, for the median, you don't have to write the numbers down and then cross off, cross off, cross off. It's really simple to do with the dots, which is what I'm gonna show you right now on the video. So, instead of rewriting them all, I'm gonna cross them all as I go with the highest and the lowest. So my highest is 10, right? I cross off the top one. Lowest is three, then 10 again, then three, 10, four. I just keep on doing this until I get to the next number, all right? So there's all five of the tens gone, all five of those numbers between three and five gone. Now I go to seven and nine. I go to nine and seven again. Keep on crossing those out, one by one. All right, now I'm down to seven and eight. So I cross off an eight, cross off a seven, cross off an eight, cross off a seven. Remember, if you're left with two values in the middle for the median, you add them up, divide them by two. So what is seven plus eight? 15, divide that by two. If you look at that, we have the exact same median that we do the mean. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. All right, question C says, do the measures of center, which are mean and median, support Sonia's inference that most seventh graders use the internet no more than seven hours a week? Well, of course we would say yes. Now, remember when it says explain, that means we're talking about say your becauses. So I need to explain why in fact that is the case. Well, I would explain it by saying when I found the mean and the median, I found it to be seven and a half, which is a little more than seven. I'm not gonna write that down because that's too much writing, but make sure you write that down in your notes. All right, next example. 
I want you guys to try this one on your own, so make sure you do that. So when it says you try on your own, okay? All right, this one says Quinn collects data about push-ups. Does it appear students generally do more push-ups last year or this year? Explain your reasoning. So here's last year's and here's this year's, all right? Now, we're just gonna look at the line plots without actually finding the average or the mean because that would take too long. We can look at the trend of where the number of dots are, the frequency, to figure out if there was more this year than last year. So, if we look at last year, the majority of the dots were between three and five for push-ups. Well, if we look at this year's, the majority of the dots were between seven and eight. So, does it appear that students did more push-ups last year or this year? We would say this year, and again, for explaining our reasoning, I'm not going to write this out because it takes too long, and I want to make this video short. We would just say that the frequency of numbers for the data set for push-ups this year was greater than the numbers for last year, right? Pretty simple. Second question says, how does the range of these data sets affect the shape of the dot plots? So, dot plots. so what we're saying here is that in the data set with a larger range, will be more spread out. Now in this case, they're about the same because they have both had a range of, of course, nine. 10 minus one is nine, 12 minus three is nine, all right? <clears throat> Last example here, okay? We have two dot plots showing the weight in ounces from samples from the Round Lake and the South Lake. So, <clears throat> shows the weight of fish from both lakes. And now it's asking us which comparative inference about the fish in the two lakes is most likely correct. So this is kind of a MCA style question, all right? Which is why we have this example in your notes because this is the kind of question you're gonna see on the MCAs and then we can't help you. So pay attention now. <clears throat> so statement A says there is about the same variation in weight between small and large fish in both lakes. The same variation. All right? Well, what does that mean? <clears throat> that means that the weight varies the same between large and small. Uh, does that actually hold true for these two examples? Probably not. Let's look at statement B. There is less variation in weight between small and large fish in South Lake. So South Lake's down here. They're saying the variation between large and small is less than the one between the round lake. Well, large and small is 21 and 15. Large and small is 21 to 12, so that statement's not true. Can't be B, okay? This one again can't be A, because 21 and 15, 21 and 12, not the same, they're different variations. C, there is less variation weight between small and large in Round Lake. The variation is, of course, six, or the range, between the fish in South Lake. Well, the variation weight is 21 to 12, which is a larger range, more spread out, more variation. So it could be C. Let's just make sure with D. It says there is greater variability in the weights of fish in Round Lake. Well, that's not true because looking where the data is on the dot plot or the line or the line plot excuse me <clears throat> it's not that case so my correct statement is C because this is less of a range than this and that's what C says just in fancier terms all right so there you have it that's the notes on line plots that's all for this video we'll see you next time <laughs>